You know it's coming. You know it's coming. Ah, oh, there it is. Welcome to Cognition Critical. Alright guys, welcome back. This is Shadow Drake, and uh... Today we are going to take what I said last time about making the second floor medical wing and throw that out the window because I got inspiration. Yeah, that that's kind of how it always happens to be honest. So for my inspiration today... Shoot, all my rockets are out. That's kind of annoying. Alright, alright. You know what? I can work with this. I can work with this. So, turn on my three miners. Just start mining. Okay, so I got an inspiration boost, guys. Yes, that's right. I had a bar do the thing and... Is that a high speed head? I had a bar do a thing and I have gotten inspiration and... Actually, I have... This ore mining rocket should be almost done too, right? All heads are dead. Down. Alright, perfect. Uh, or landing pad. And scanner rocket, I think. I'm going to go on ahead and tell you to land two. And pump liquid engine. Yeah, there we go. I just gotta watch the ore mining rocket. That's all I gotta do. So I'm going to get rid of that auto land. That's crap. Okay, so I got inspiration. And my inspiration is as follows. I am going to print some IC-10 chips. Almost out of gold. So I got to make some gold. But I got rockets coming down. So I don't want to do that. I want to make... A, screw it, four of those. That's much closer than I expected. All right, so thanks to uh, some help from a loyal viewer who's watching me struggle and or think of stuff, I kind of have something that I want to do. And I really finally got the inspiration to try to truly automate this, the rockets. And this will come. Okay. Oh. And this will come based on the fact that I want to do. Where is the avionics thing? There it is. So the avionics. Let's just get. Let me just talk about it. We're going to need to know the thrust. We are going to need to know velocity relative to why I think. I don't really need to know any of this. Where is it? I will need the destination code and the current code and the mass. I believe that's what I'm going to need. So I believe I'm going to need all of these values. Wait, there's an, there's an apex. I don't think I will need that. I don't know. Isn't there an altitude? There's a re-entry altitude, but I thought that there was something for coming down. And then that's... Screw it, there's a scanner rocket that's coming down. Where's your avionics? Apex. Thrust, mass, relative velocity. Current code. Don't need weight. I'm trying to find that altitude code. I don't see it. That's kind of a problem. I thought it would have been there. So where is the altitude? Altitude. 
Is there an altitude? There's a progress, but that doesn't help me. Shoot. The only thing that would help me is the apex for this, but that's not gonna... That's not... That's not good enough, stationers. That really is not good enough. Okay, whatever. That's fine. The ore mining rocket. Let's see. There's progress. And I can check it out on this. There's progress. And I think that's it. So, first thing I want to tackle is... Uh, let me just see how my gas miner rocket is doing. Oh, are you full already? You are full. Alright. Cool. Come back. I'm gonna... That is actually insane. Wait, that was never open. Go back. <laughs> Go back. You're here again, rocket housing. I don't even remember what this thing was gonna do. Oh, yeah, that's for the nitrous warmer because it keeps that on or off. Okay. Mine. It's quite a lot of ore that it got there. It's fine because I want some a lot of nitrous. So. Oh, sorry, I'm really trying to get this. If I was better prepared for this, I would have things done. Done. Uh, but everything is going to be the same here, so I'll just grab the acceleration. I'll just get the current code, the apex, the re-entry altitude, the thrust, the mass, the destination code, and the progress, and the velocity. That should square away. Anyway, so what I'm talking about, what I am going to try to do is do an auto landing script and there's two ways to approach this there's going to be the suicide burn and the gradual burn now unfortunately this altitude is not there's no real value for that altitude but I presume that this progress is going to be zero times 25,000 to say that it's up there and it'll gradually go down and I can do math to confirm that The velocity when it first starts is always negative 400 meters per second square coming down. And that's going to be helpful for a suicide burn script. Or literally anything. So, let's see how my... S You're going to all be open. Emer even my emergency battery. All of this is going to be there. That's fine, because i got to remodel stuff. Where's my gas miner? That's gonna keep mining, so my always open cargo, it needs to be dumping. There we go. Alright. Or miner rocket, let's land you. And so this is kind of what I wanted to do. So that progress. So I think 10% is, yeah, a little bit about that. So 50% will be 1250. I'm trying to slow it down quickly. It's almost at 50%. It's going by really quickly. Yep, 
twelve fifty. All right, which is good to know. But that kind of complicates things a little bit because the apex <laughs> negative infinity. I needed to know the current altitude. And I don't see that anywhere. And so let me just throw down the thrust for you. 15, 20, 25, wow. Twenty point five. Twenty point two. There we go. Ah, twenty point three. Point three. Twenty point four. That works for now. And so this velocity relative to y would be would have been helpful to know. But it seems like I have to worry about this apex. So twenty point three. The apex gives negative number. That's that's cool. That works. So I'm doing basically the data collection for how this is going to do. But other than that, I will need to know the progress based on 25,000 to know truly how far it has come down. Ah, it's going to be backwards. It's not really what I wanted to do. But mm, I can always do 1 minus progress to know where it is. Because uh, what 1 minus 10% is 90%. So that means it's at... Whatever 10% of that is, what, 22? Look, math sometimes ain't mathing right now when I'm not in the middle of doing math. And so what I am doing here is essentially a, grouch, a gradual burn. I would be calculating this and come up with a gradual burn so that the rocket can do this. And so with the gradual burn, I am burning through some fuel. And so one of the questions that I don't know okay that's still mining that's fine one of the questions that I wasn't sure about is whether a gradual burn type like this is going to be better in the fuel conservation size or a suicide burn and I did the math and but I've been, I've been looking at it in the predominant sense that I was thinking that it's linear, which it may or may not be linear. You know, full throttle might be using significantly more fuel, in which case having a lower throttle would mean that it's more, you know, better fuel conservation. But I really don't think that's the case because adjusting the throttle gives me an, an approximate change towards the fuel consumption re relative to my thrust. So like 20% thrust right here, that's re literally a fifth of that. So that means 6.75 times five, that's what, 30? So that means I should be getting roughly 33 kilonewtons worth of thrust at 100%. And if we do that, you saw that I did get about that far. Just gonna need to let this come down some more because I just murdered this thrust quite a bit. And this is kind of what the whole gradual burn is for. Because I started really high up, I have a lot. I have a lot of leeway in this. up need to bring this up a bit more there we go that'll be enough I think orange is okay green is the best and it's just gonna be really the biggest thing is managing so that my apex is roughly negative five and hopefully the 
you know, negative five, negative six, and adjusting the thrust to make sure that it hits that. So it's going to, there's going to be some PID elements, but there's going to be a major calculation that has to happen first. Pressure-fed rocket is coming down. Perfect. Now, set you to 100. Uh, my gas miner rocket. You're almost done. That's fine. We'll leave you going. Let's get some more gold to print out some icy tents. So yeah, sorry, that, that was the longest introduction in which I realized that I was not in a good position to actually get started on this. But now I am going to do that. this too, so that it can fill itself. All of this is going well. I have 189. Wow, these are chugging through that. That's good. Alright, so... Let's print out some icy tents. Okay, so long introduction notwithstanding. Let's print out some more of you. I'm gonna have I'm gonna redo my rockets so that I can better automate them. And the biggest things I need to do about them is that I need to see roughly how much or you know to do, get this auto lander working right because this isn't really going to be very good auto lander because i have a mass of 5760 and i'll do some math to kind of go with that I'll go over why that's needs a rework so let's get you let's get myself squared away but let me offload my two rockets well I really do need to build a second station battery. Low pressure. All right, where are we at critical. here? Might need to check on that down there. All right. So let's pull this out charge everything. Pull this out, charge everything as well. Let me go check on that cold room downstairs to see where it's at, because... Oh no, it's warming up, so that means the stuff down there, the water, the water is keeping it good. That should be fine. So that's handling like it should! Yay! Something that isn't gonna kill me. For once. I hope. So let's get one of you. And honestly, the hard part with this is that uh, because I didn't take the time to truly separate some stuff, it's going to look kind of janky. I should dump out the uh, gold. That's almost done. All right, so let's get to this. Long-winded explanation time. Let's get you in here. I'm going to have to do two things. So let's clear you. So I plan on separating the rocket to three chips, maybe four, depending on the rocket. Uh, but all three, all rockets that I want are going to have three predominant chips and housings. Uh, the devs and have stated, I think it's the beta, I'm not sure if it's out now, 
that they're going to reduce the power for the rocket housing ships from 50 watts each to 10 watts each. So that means that there's going to be significant power savings. I can't believe I spent half my time talk getting rockets to look. So I plan on having three main major control chips. Chip number one is going to be kind of the destination selector and also the main the main head. It'll call the other chips as necessary based on where we're at. I'm not going to work with that just yet, but that'll be something to work on next. Chip number two is going to be the action script. And like my scanner rocket has, it, it kind of functions as an action script right now. But it needs better better calls because it needs to perform the scanning action as needed as detailed by the first chip and the final chip is going to be the landing chip which honestly needs to be very fluid and dynamic and needs to be very accurate so what we're going to do is the landing chip to get a little bit on the math for this involved um, if you've taken calculus and stuff you learn you'll learn this information in a, to some degree if not it's based it's not essentially rocket science, but it's more dealing with the overall math of, of a parabola. But taking Cal 3, there's something very special with the position functions, which for sometimes I believe it's denoted as S. Don't know why. I mean, sometimes it's F of X, whatever. But uh, for this case, I'm just going to use S for position. It doesn't make any sense. But typically, it's a quadratic function that is basically... Uh, some acceleration a times times the time t squared plus some velocity function t plus a predetermined height and that's basically the basic gist of it now the thing about that when you learn what you learn in calculus is the velocity for a moving object at that particular point in time is denoted as 2a plus v because that's the derivative of it and of course the acceleration is just basically 2a and so we're going to use essentially that from our given data to come up with what we need now to add things to it we don't really get a lot of information but based on the way that we can program our rockets, we, we have some stable data. So for example, from, from time zero, or right when the rocket is landing, h is actually going to be equal to 25,000 or 40,000. Come on, I want a comma. Or 75,000 or 125,000. I don't know why I'm putting commas here considering that not everybody uses those. In fact, let me make sure that those heights are actually right. 25, 40, 70, and 120. That's right. So basically our math function will have h be any of these fours. And as I've seen, v is always equal to negative 400. So that kind of gets us some parts. So then that kind of comes to the question of what what do we need what is a and how does and how does force well i forgot one thing that you do need to know is well force equals mass times acceleration so then how much force do we need and how does this relate to thrust I'm sorry that I'm going to bore you with Shadow Drake does calculus and math for this, but this is prudent for knowing how to make your own landing script or to understand how it works. You can work with it in different ways. You can work with it with a uh, PID loop and watch, you know, as we saw, we could watch the apex to get it to, you know, to get the apex down to negative two. But if we want to make a landing script, that is a slow burn, a gradual burn throughout the entire length of the rocket, or when to fire the suicide script, we would need to know this information. So, if I can take you back to the high school days or middle school days for the people who learn quadratic formulas in middle school, that early, I was in middle school, but I, I really, really learned this well. You will know that we need to to find the zero of a function, we need the zero of s. So we need 
the 0 of s. And this comes with the whole quadratic formula. I can't remember if that was the right name of it, but you know, that's negative b plus or minus plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and all of that is over 2a. Literally all of this is over 2a. I'm sure you're wondering, it's like, why do we need to do this? I'll tell you this. All we need is the discriminant. The discriminant tells you how many real zeros you have in the function. So we actually just need b squared minus 4ac. Well, what is that? Well, technically, <laughs> this is a, let me just rewrite it. So b squared minus 4ah, to write it in the vernacular that I have up here. Oh, well, we know v, we know h. So that means that the a that we need is going to be v squared divided by 4h. So that, that helps greatly to know what we need. <sighs> so if we plug it in, uh, so what that does is that lets us know what A is. So at some value A, so at some acceleration A, it'll make it so that this will zero out. If we, if we match our force, I guess I might be getting it up for myself. So this is the A that we need. But keep in mind that this, this A is a little bit different. And that describes the A over here. To know how truly that affects the velocity, we actually need to know to two A. So we'll just call the acceleration needed to touch down at exactly zero is actually going to be 2a. So we find 2a, and so the acceleration we need is 2a. Why? Because there's another there's another given that we know, and that's g, which is gravity. And for Europa, I believe that's negative 1.3. Negative 1.3. And so that's a given. So for, in for Europa, that'll be negative 1.3. Different planets, it'll change. And then, like I said, this will go as low as negative 1 to as high as negative 5.5. And so this is just another constant that is part of our formula. So this 2a is directly what it is here. So whatever number we get here, let, you know, let's just plug it in. Let's just do a mathematical example. So let's say the a I need will be 400 squared divided by 4, and let's just say that's 25,000, you know. We're just going to calculate it for my rocket. So let me just do that. 400 times 400 divided by 4 divided by 25,000. All right, so the IA I need to make my rocket touch down safely is 1.6 meters per second squared. That's this number right here. So now you're like, okay, well, that's cool. That's cool. But th this is the number that gets plugged in here. What we actually need to make sure is that at the time that we touch down, our velocity is zero. And as you can see here, this function, 2a, tells you something different. So that would mean for it to be zero, that's a, there's supposed to be a T there right there. I'm sorry. I'm misleading y'all. Apologize. At time, whatever the rocket touches down, this whole thing needs to be zero. So let's say a touchdown time, uh, whatever that is, I think it's 125 seconds. I did the math. Well, the math is going to be simple for that because that's negative B over 2A, which, you know, that's 400 divided by... 3.2 in this case. Yep, that's 125. T equals 
125. So basically at 125 seconds, we need to make sure that the velocity is zero. And that's why there's this 2a constant right here. So really truthfully, the a, the, the acceleration that we need to achieve this is 3.2. But this isn't the a for the rocket. We can't do this because keep in mind that this a is a combination of the rocket's propulsion plus gravity. So this a is actually supposed 3.2 is equal to rocket propulsion minus 1.3 in this case. Which means that the rocket's rocket a that we need is actually going to be uh, 4.5. So this acceleration of thrust is what we need. Man, I really wish that this, these numbers were better. Maybe I shouldn't comment it out. Maybe I should keep it that so that it's easier to see. Red numbers are easier to see, right? So this is what we need. What we need from our rocket. So now we basically get to F equals MA. So the force we need from the rocket is going to be equal to whatever our mass is. And mass is unfortunately an ever-changing value. So even if our mass is 5,000 kilograms. Well, let me look at this one. Gas minor rocket. 5760. All right. Let's just do the math. I presume 5760. It's not a nice clean number, but whatever. So F will be... 5760 times our 4.5, which if I do the math for that, 5760 times 4.5, that means I need exactly 25,920 kilonewtons of thrust. So, I need that much thrust from my propulsion to have a safe touchdown. Now, because we set a percentage thrust, so that, that you know we just do 25, 9, 20 divided by uh, 31, 100, because that's what the nitrous does, and so that's basically a setting of 83.34 percent. So if I set my rocket 83.34 percent, it should come down safely. But I need to redo this math because I forgot one one crucial detail, and that is that right now. It is mining a little bit. It's got enough. Look, I think you got enough. Let's get you to come back. I think that's more than enough nitrous, to be honest. I think I was trying to mine out the heads, but ugh, I don't think I'll be able to do that. All right. Let's get you to come back. And that's part of... Where is my avionics? Come on. Why don't I have this? That's why I needed to look at the thrust. You see, that number is not exactly perfect, but it does give me the mass does give me an acceleration. I thought this was supposed to drop by one in space. That's weird. And as you can see, as I'm burning fuel, my mass is decreasing. And so I need to see what it is at this point. And I am going to go ahead and delete that NOS asteroid. It's not needed anymore. And so that's kind of what the whole landing script is going to be all about. I have to basically calculate all of this stuff to find this percent thrust. Now this is going to be a gradual thrust system. So I'll cover that on a different day, how I would probably go about making a suicide burn. But it'll be the same thing. You calculate, you do all this math to calculate. See how much thrust you need. 
if it's not above some threshold you want to set, like say 95%, then you wait a tick. So that means a half a second will go by. But if a half a second goes by, your velocity needs to change. So the next time, then the math, you'll do negative 401.3 for your velocity. And the height that you have left is going to be 25,000 minus whatever your velocity was at that time. So in the next case, it'll be 24,600. So we we'll repeat the math with the new V, with the new H, and we repeat. Obviously, we're going to need a higher thrust to stop it in time. And it'll keep doing that. We'll keep cycling through that loop until some threshold, let's say 95%, is hit. And then at that point, you just turn on the dang engines and you should have enough thrust to handle that. But the math is going to get funky because you need to know exactly what your theoretical max thrust is. See, I put 31,100 here. Because, let's just be honest, the pumped liquid is fairly stable. I mean, that thrust is barely changing. So that's that's a good number to work with. And as you remember, my ore mining rocket is different in the sense that its thrust varied greatly because it depended completely on my volume pump setup and how much pressure it was. It varied between 31 kilonewtons and 34 kilonewtons. And so, at the time that I grabbed that value for what my theoretical max thrust is, I better hope that I either don't have less or that I didn't overshoot it, and that makes my suicide burn a little bit trickier. But, that's why I said, if you give yourself some leeway, you should have more than enough. And as you can see, this says that I am not going to make landing at 25 kilometers. But as we did with the math, I actually can. It actually says that I need 83.34%, but we're going to redo the math when it arrives at orbital, Europa orbit. Because my, my mass is going to change, which means my thrust is going to change. I mean, this whole top part is not going to change, but you know. Because my, maths, math is, my mass is going to change, this part is going to change. So, you know, let's say it's a 5400 once it gets there. 4.5 times 5,400, that's only 24,300. We divide that by 31,100, 31,100, I have a calculator. That means it's actually 78.1% thrust. And you can see that's significantly less. The change in mass greatly changes things. And so what what the what the landing script does is it needs to go through the whole calculation. Calculates at twenty five thousand. If my thrust is less than a hundred percent, I'm golden. I can land at that. If it's over a hundred percent, it's gonna be a failure. Push forty thousand. Recalculate. Less than a hundred percent, awesome. Not next number up. Next number up. If it gets to this point and it's still gonna fail, that rocket's toast. There's nothing I can do to fix it other than potentially burning fuel. Oh, come on. You still got three minutes? Rockets take forever. And look, at 5,400, it's probably going to be a little bit less than that. And then as an experiment, I'm just going to adjust the throttle to do that. And... What we're going to see is it's going to prob it's going to start perfect but then you'll see the apex is going to increase because my mass is going to decrease. This is going to be That's going to be a thing. So I just multiply by 4.5. And actually 
I need to divide by 31081. Okay. So let's see. My force theoretical 31081. See, I'm already less than that. But by the math, it's going to land. And that's the thing. And so that's why, I, that's why I'm thinking that for this chip, I'm going to have this set up. I'll, I'll program the gradual burn first, because that'll be fairly easy. And after the gradual setting is set up, you know, it'll, it'll get the throttle set up. But it'll, But the thing is... The thing I need is this acceleration. That's something that I can work with. And then I can have something that to get the thrust I need, I, it's always going to be a function of this acceleration we found plus the force. But this acceleration isn't really going to change too much, to be honest, except for if we're doing 25, 40, 75, or 125. And so really, the force is gonna, the amount of force I need is gonna change because of my weight and potentially engine performance. Knowing my weight means I know the exact force I need. The exact force I need divided by my theoretical thrust gives me my rough percentage. And then from here, PID, you know, PID loop, just adjust that up or down to get a good apex. Come on now. Almost there. Almost there, guys. Really apologize. Can't believe it's been 45 minutes and all I've talked about is what I'm doing. I guess this is going to be the theoreticals for what I intend to do. Alright. So, now that we got that, let's let's try to be a little bit accurate right now. So let's say, let's just say 5,200 for now because it's you know we're gonna use it. So I'm gonna plug in neater numbers. 5,200. So 5,200 times 4.5. I need, ironically, 23,400 thrusts. Now, divided by 31, 081, means that I need 75.29% thrust. So I'm just going to put 75.2. Well, I'll put 75.29. 75.29%. So, you said that it's going to be a failure. I disagree with you. So, 75.29%. That'll be my thrust that we calculated. Set it to gas mount, and we're going to watch what the apex does. So you see that the apex is negative, because I undertuned the weight. But you see that it's increasing, because keep in mind that right now, nothing is controlling it. It's constantly burning with 75.29%. So as I burn off fuel, I get more thrust out of just this setting. See, this, this thrust is constant. Okay, not kind of a lie. I get more acceleration because there's less, less of it. It's consumed by my... Look, okay, look. Trust me, I get more acceleration out of it. May have horribly undertuned that, but we will see. All right, you know what? 76. This is dropping fast enough. I was getting concerned for that. But you know, as I burn off my fuel, this f apex fixes up. And look, now I'm, I actually way overdid it. So there's less mass, so my thrust gives me a greater acceleration. 
which means it slows down faster. And this kind of goes to show the tricky part with this type of system. Oh boy, is that going to crash? Oh, it landed. Oh, that probably was a crazy landing. We have touched down. And I did not explode. Whew. I'll be honest, I was sweating a few bullets for the moment there. Because I undertuned that thrust. And that actually kind of goes with that. Because a faster accelerate, you know, a higher speed coming down means your acceleration needs to overcome that. And so I think I'll try, I'll get this first system set up on the nitrous, or just, no, let's just, let's just do the scanner rocket. Wait a second, that's not coming out. Shoot. Oh boy. I gotta get rid of my math. Come on now. Wait, I can export it. My math chip. Okay. What does the shoot need to be called? GR shoot. Umbilical. Oh, crap. All right. GR shoot umbilical you can always make mistakes gr shoot umbilical that should work now right yep it did okay and so which one is that that right yeah that's my rocket that should be fine it should be groaning because it's always gonna be hot all right uh... well I have a bunch of nitrous ice now Okay, so, you see, even though the auto landing said it was not going to make it, still made it. Such a liar. Alright. Fortunately, I don't really have much time for this, so let's get back to it. Alright. So that's basically the math. So let's start. Alias. Alias. Avionics will be D0. Alias. Uh, engine will be D1. Honestly, I think that's all I need. The avionics and the engine. I'm going to put an alias for the control housing. That'll be D3. Now it's going to be so alias the step counter. I always work with steps, R15. But now we're going to need to define G for gravity. And that's my timer that says that I am. And that's going to be 
negative 1.3. We're going to do alias force. Force max, R14. Alias force, R13. We're going to define B. That's going to be negative 400. So define H, H1, that's going to be 25,000. Define H2, that'll be 40,000. Define H3, that's 75,000. Define H4, what would be 125,000. Alias mass R12. Alias uh, a, th a needed R11. Alias A needed R10. So that gets basically most of my main stuff. So let's do main and yield J main. I'm going to have to have a lot more definitions, but I'm just going to keep this here because I unfortunately have to wrap up. I didn't have much time, but I did want to explain what the overall math would be. So if I keep this here, I'll hopefully remember for next time. So apologize that this is all a math heavy episode of me essentially accomplishing nothing, but this is something that I definitely want to get done. Uh, I never checked on my chickens, so let's just do that real quick. They're either alive or they're dead. Schrodinger's chicken. What the f- Okay, whatever, whatever. That makes no sense, they just die. All right, whatever. Let's save that wheat. I'm shaking my head, guys. I really am. I don't know why these they are so hard to keep alive. They just are. Uh before I end, I do want to see how well this handles when I put quite a bit of uh Nitrous in the system. Low pressure. Oxygen critical. So let's put four just to test out the waters. One, two, three, four. See, that's already way too much. Good grief. I didn't even put that much in there, and it's already too hot. Yeah, nitrous is a really tough gas to work with. Down to five and negative. This is desperately trying to cool down. Temperature low. That's a twenty ten. Bad. 
So it's got to be a really gradual thing, which is kind of what concerns me. So I, I, I wanted to put a full 8, so if, if I put a full 8, that could have probably ended catastrophically. So let's just do 2. Also too much. So it's like this is not enough of a buffer. Can't believe just how much this goes. Yeah, processing nitrous ice is going to be really bad. I think at this point, if I have any amount of nitrous in the system, I just got to be extremely slow with it. And look, it's taking that much. energy that just generates. Man, nitrous is such a tough thing. Ugh. Look, that's still increasing. There's just no way that stuff down there could even potentially handle it. I need like a huge heat sink. It's insane. I actually just need to line this with even more insulated pipes so that this just less of an incentive for this to condense. Gah! I wonder. I mine purely nitrous. So I'm curious how well this is going to do. Uh, it's going to heat up like mad, I know. Actually, the interesting thing is this might actually warm up my water a bit. Right? I think when this hits 500, it'll push. Right? Or did it get lost? I suppose I pushed that already. Did I get CO2 in here? Oh, did I get some liquid CO2? How did this get stuck? Oh, it's not stuck. How did I get some CO2 in here? I must have had some liquid CO2 that got dumped in here. That's a potential problem. Because this should have emptied it out completely. As if the, the pollutants wasn't 100%, it should have emptied it all out. Uh, now I gotta do something to fix that. Uh, okay, next time I'm gonna fix my mistakes. I always have mistakes somewhere. Oh, well, I got it. Oh, no. How did I get that in there? Oh, now I know how I got that in there. It's because I, I try to make sure that things didn't explode. Oh. And some of this got in here. Ugh. All right. 
next time. I gotta try to figure out how I'm gonna. Eh, that should be fine. It is just it's gonna it's gonna mess up this slightly, but it should eventually clear itself out. All right. We will return, and I will make a landing script, and I will make it calculate, and hopefully get get that to land. Hunger, we'll start with the nitrous miner, and then I can work on the other minutia. Uh, thank you for your time. Let's eat my cake. And we will see you when I return. forget the thing. Uh, Alright. See you later. Oh, and thanks again. Bye.